Hi, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday morning, August 4th. Hoping this is going. Yeah, there we go, we're starting. Good morning, August 4th, Wednesday. Hello, everyone. Um, just hopped out of the shower, so it probably look like my hair's wet, and I'm um, just, yeah, coming to you uh, out of trying to be faithful. Um, thank you for waiting for me to feel a little better to come on here, and um, so we're going to be in Judges today, chapter 9. We're going to read about Abimelech and his story, and we're going to get started here on page 91 of the Passion Translation, the book of Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. All right, Abimelech's conspiracy. Abimelech is the illegitimate son of Gideon, and Abimelech's story is not anything good or to be proud of. It's kind of a sad story about this ambitious wannabe ruler. Um, who had uh, no respect for life, especially his own family's life. Abimelech, son of Baal fighter or Gideon, went to his mother's brothers to the rest of her clan in Shechem and said to them, Ask all the leaders of Shechem, and said, uh, Ask all the leaders of Shechem, which do you prefer? Do you have just one man as your ruler, or have seventy of Baal fighter's sons rule over you? And don't forget, I'm your own flesh and blood. So he's already scheming here with this question that um, didn't really have a good answer. When the brothers repeated, sorry, I've got stuff popping up on my screen. When the brothers repeated these words to the leaders of Shechem, their hearts were drawn to Abimelech, for they said, He's from our hometown, and he's from our own clan. They gave him 70 shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Bareth, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless scoundrels to follow him. He went to his father's home in Ophrah, and on one stone executed his 70 brothers. Now, I don't know exactly how this worked. Well, on one stone he executed 70 of his brothers. I don't know if he laid them on the stone or how this worked, but he killed his 70 brothers. And this is just unthinkable, unfathomable. Hi, Caitlin. He went to his father's home in Ophrah and on one stone executed his 70 brothers. It's just unthinkable, unbelievable. The sons of Baal fighter, jo Jotham, though, Baal fighter's youngest son escaped and went into hiding. So there was one brother that escaped, and his name was Jotham. And we have the spirit of Jotham on us to escape the evil and wickedness of those around us who are not wanting us to live, wanting us, and they want to be in power over us. All the citizens of Shechem and Beth Melo gathered beside the sacred tree of the pillar in Shechem and crowned Abimelech king. Jotham's fable. So this is another section, the Thornbush king. When Jotham learned about this, he climbed up on the mount, on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. All the trees one day determined to anoint a king for themselves, and they said to the olive tree. So this is a Old Testament parable. This is very unusual. There's three trees in the parable. All the trees one day determined to anoint a king for themselves, and they said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, What? Give up my rich oil that is used to honor both gods and men to hold sway over the trees? Next the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, What? Give up my good, sweet fruit to hold sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, What? Give up my wine, which cheers both gods and men to hold sway over the trees? Finally all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come, be our king. Interesting that they went to the thorn bush at the end. 
It reminds me of the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. Come and be our king, Thornbush. The Thornbush replied, If you really want to anoint me your king, then come and put your trust in my shade. If you don't, then let fire blaze out of my thorny branches and consume the cedars of Lebanon. <clears throat> now then, let me ask you this. Do you really think you did a right and honorable thing when you made Abimelech king? So he's out of the parable now and he's applying it to their current situation. Do you think you treated Baalfighter and his family fairly? Gideon. And to think that my father fought for you. He risked his life to save you from the power of the Midianites. This really reminds me of the administration that we had up until this last year, fighting for our lives, risking his life to save us from the power of the Midianites. And now we have an administration that no longer looks after us. And he's conf Jotham is confronting the people and he's saying, to think that my father fought for you and risked his life to save you from the power of the Midianites. Today you've revolted against my father's family. You've murdered his 70 sons on a single stone. And you made Abimelech, the son of his slave girl, king over the citizens of Shechem because he's your close relative. What were you thinking? Yeah, we have to ask, what were we thinking? I just ask America right now, what were you thinking? If you've acted honorably and done what's right by Baal Fighter and his family today, then may you enjoy Abimelech, this thornbush king, this thornbush king of yours, and may he enjoy you too. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo. Let fire come out from you, citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, Beth Milo and consume Abimelech. After shouting these words, Jotham ran away and went to live at the well because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. Um, All right. He had to run and hide because he knew that he could be killed by Abimelech after speaking the truth. I see um, in the news lately people taking their own lives because for fear of, of the truth that they know, <clears throat> especially on what happened on January 6th, and it's just so grievous. After Abimelech had ruled Israel for three years, God sent a spirit to stir up hostility between Abimelech and the citizens of Shechem. So God himself can send a spirit into the mix to stir up hostility um, between the leader, the ruler, and the people. And that this hostility and this unrest can lead to getting things back in order. And they rebelled against him. God sent this judgment in order to avenge the brutal murder of Baal fighters' 70 sons and the shedding of their blood. I think we should take note, though, here that it took three years for this to happen. And as much as we want things to be rectified immediately, we're just praying, to turn this around, God. In this story, it took three years. <clears throat> God sent this judgment in order to avenge the brutal murder of Baal fighter's 70 sons and the shedding of their blood. Righteous retribution caught up with both Abimelech, who had instigated the murder of his half-brothers, and the citizens of Shechem, who had aided and abetted him. In their uprising against Abimelech, the citizens of Shechem placed bandits on the hilltops to ambush and to rob everyone who passed by and Abimelech heard of their treachery. One day a man named Gaul, son of Ebed, moved with his clan into Shechem, and Gaul won the confidence of the people. So this is G-A-A-L. Um, he 
He is the son of Ebed. I'm just looking up this for just a second. Jagal means to loathe. It means hateful. It was possibly a nickname. A related Hebrew word means dung beetle. And Ebed means servant. If Gaul is not his actual name, it could be translated a loathsome dug, dung beetle, hateful man, or a servant's son. It, this divisive name, derisive name, uh, hints at his low social status. He was a troublemaker. All right. Um, so this guy, Gaul, won the confidence of the people, and after the grape harvest, they trod the grapes and celebrated a festival in the temple of Baal, their god. So no longer was Yahweh their god. That's why they're having all this trouble. While they were drinking and feasting, they cursed Abimelech. Gaul, son of Abed, rose and said, Who is this Abimelech? We are the Shechemites now. Why should we serve him? Isn't he Baal fighter's son, and isn't the gov governor of our city, Zebul, his deputy? Why should we take orders from him? We're descendants of Hamor, Shechem's founder. Why should we be slaves of Abimelech? If only the people of Shechem were under my command, then I would get rid of him. I would say to Abimelech, assemble your whole army and we will defeat them all. Zebul, the governor of the city, was infuriated when he heard of the taunts of Gael, son of Ebel, Ebed. He secretly sent messengers to Abimelech, saying, Gael, or Gaal, son of Ebed, and his clan have come to Shechem. They're inciting the entire city against you. He's getting them all worked up. Now then, under the dark cover of darkness, you and your men should come up and take up concealed positions in the fields. At sunrise, launch your surprise attack and advance against the city. When Gaul and his men come out to face you, fight them with all of your might. So Abimelech and all his men set out by night and took up concealed positions near Shechem in four groups. Gaul, son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city just as Abimelech and his soldiers got up from their hiding places. When Gaul saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, an army is marching down from the hilltops. Zebul replied, That's nothing but shadows in the hills. They only look like men. More deception. Gaul spoke up again, No, look, look, I see people coming down the center and another group from the direction of Oracle Oak. Then Zebul said to him, where is all your big talk now? Weren't you the loudmouth who said, Who is Abimelech, that he should, could make us his slaves? The men you ridiculed are now com coming to fight you. Go ahead. Go and fight them. <clears throat> so Gaul led the men of Shechem and went out to fight Abimelech. Abimelech chased him, and many Shechemites fell wounded and died before they could retreat to the city gate. They didn't make it home. They died. Outside the city gates, Abimelech returned to his headquarters at Aramah, while Zebul drove Gael, Gal and his clan out of Shechem. The next day, Abimelech found out that the people of Shechem <coughs> were planning to go out on a foray into the countryside. Okay, and I did know, not know what this word meant. A foray <clears throat> is a sudden attack or an incursion into enemy territory, especially to obtain something. It's like a raid. <clears throat> so he heard about them going to do a raid. Um, so he, he divided his men into three groups, and they set out to ambush the Shechemites in the fields. As soon as Abimelech saw the people leaving the city, he sprang up and attacked them. Abimelech and his men advanced rapidly and occupied the city gate. The other two companies chased them down out into the open fields and killed them. Abimelech fought hard all day at the gate of Shechem until he had captured the city. He massacred all its people. He leveled the city to rubble and he scattered salt over it. 
<clears throat> he may have scattered salt over the city as a sign that retribution had been served over the gross injustice of the people of Shechem. Shechem was rebuilt 150 years later. Um, so, then when they heard this news, the leading citizens living in the Shechem Tower ran into the stronghold of the Temple of baal Bareth. When Abimelech heard that they had assembled there, he and all his forces went up Mount Zalman. Taking an axe in his hand, he cut off some branches and hoisted the spindle onto his shoulders. So he had branches that he hoisted up on his shoulder. He ordered the men with him, quick, do the same. So each one cut a bundle of branches and followed Abimelech. They piled them against the walls of the temple, and with the people inside, they set it on fire. So they lit it on fire. So everyone who fled into the tower of Shechem died. Nearly a thousand men and women perished. Mm. Next, Abimelech attacked the city of Thebes and captured it. All the people had fled to the Tower of Strength in the middle of the city. They locked themselves in and climbed up onto the tower roof. Abimelech advanced as far as the tower, stormed it, and set it on fire. Yeah. But a woman dropped a millstone on his head and fractured his skull. So that, that was it for Abimelech. He lost his life right there at that last um, place at the city of Tabez. Tabez means brightness. Um, Abimelech cried out to his armor bearer, bearer. This is how prideful he was. Kill me, he said, with your sword so no one can say I was killed by a woman. Ugh. Oh. So his servant ran him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw, Israelites saw that Abimelech was dead, everyone went home. God avenged. Now remember, he killed all 70 of his, well, except for Jotham, his brothers on a stone. And then um, the way that he actually died, even though the sword was run through him, was from a stone being dropped on his head. So stone for stone, I guess. God avenged the evil that Abimelech had done to his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God also punished the Shechemites for all their wickedness. And that day, the curse of Jotham, son of Baalfire, was fulfilled. So he had given them that prophetic word, which was in the form of a parable. And um, he had warned them. And that was the day that the Lord fulfilled it. The Lord keeps his promises, and he will keep his promises to us as well. That is chapter 9. Um, that's what we're going to go through today. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to put in the uh, comments. But I'm glad that we got to do this. And I will be, Lord willing, back on here tomorrow, Thursday morning. And we'll be um, reading about Tola, another judge, um, and we'll be in chapter 10. As I said yesterday, it's probably going to take us all of August to get through the book of Judges. All right, God bless you. Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for these people who love your word. Go with them today and give them the peace that passes all understanding to rule in their hearts. Walk with us, Jesus. Amen. You're welcome, Caitlin. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good day.